Today's guest on my Best Life podcast is a young entrepreneur who used her creativeness, playfulness, and childlike self to create a sustainable yoga mat company which gives back. Our guest today is Yara Kamal from Scoria. Welcome to my Best Life podcast with Flavia Abadia. We are a new inspirational and motivational podcast featuring people with positive mindsets achieving tremendous things with tips, advice, and life lessons to help you live your best life. Today's episode is brought to you by Scoria. Spark the child within with signature cork yoga mats and accessories by using the code MYBESTLIFE at checkout for 15% off your order. Hello and welcome to My Best Life podcast. My name is Flavia Abadia and today's very special guest is Yara. She's founder of the sustainable lifestyle and yoga brand Scoria and she's here to talk about her journey, um, some of the products she has and her experiences with yoga and life in general. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> you can actually get a discount off all of the products we talk about today on Scoria's website with the discount code MYBESTLIFE at checkout and you will get 15% off all the products. Great. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, before we get into how like you're so young and you created this amazing sustainable company that not only helps people but is helping the world with donating meals to people... Um, how did you even get into yoga or discover yoga? Hmm. Yeah, good question. So yoga came to me a little, like a long time ago. I would say maybe I was in high school, like maybe that's six or seven years ago. Um, mm -hmm. I was just trying to go to yoga for like fitness. You okay. know how everyone starts yoga. You just go to a yoga class. Mm -hmm. You want to try something new and challenge yourself. And I get sometimes pretty competitive. I just like really like to challenge myself. Mm -hmm. I compete with myself a lot. Because um, you're, you're, you do Taekwondo, yeah. right? Because you came from a family that does Taekwondo. Her dad is an <laughs> Olympian for Jordan. Yeah, he's, oh. he's an Olympic medalist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he got, yeah, he got a medal for Jordan. Yeah. Cool. He's, in Taekwondo. So yeah, growing up in that household was very, a, lo a lot of times it's very inspiring because, mm -hmm. you know, um, my my parents are athletes even my mom that's oh, how she cool. met my dad actually through oh, taekwondo what? oh she does taekwondo too yeah so she's a black belt like she's oh, now cool. i think four degrees or something like that and then my sister and my brother so everyone in my household is like taekwondo and my aunt okay. and my uncles so cool yeah it's a pretty big family on like martial arts mm -hmm. and my dad also like ever since he grew up he's like always like you know chasing his dream or um getting into sports getting into sport marketing starting his businesses closing down his business so he went through a lot of you know a lot of entrepreneurial journey mm -hmm. so he was very inspiring to me when i like growing up and i felt like a lot more freedom to be able to get creative and do whatever i really like to do and follow my passions and it's great to not have those restrictions you know growing up in a family that's more supportive in terms mm -hmm. of this um uh, stuff so yeah and when I, yeah, when I started yoga, it was for fitness. And I just went to this yoga class and it was hot yoga. I hated okay. it. <laughs> oh my God. My first yoga experience or hot yoga, I didn't like it either. <laughs> yeah. I was like, whoa, I like, what is this? You know, like after a yeah. while, I just kept going back to child's pose. And I thought I'm so strong and I could do it. But I just realized that, yeah, my body wasn't used to it. And then I thought it's just like for fitness. This is challenging. So mm. I got more addicted into trying to do more yoga because I was okay. like, wow, why can't I do this? I need to do this. Yeah. <laughs> so I got more like into trying to get on movement and moving and stuff. But then I got off of yoga for a long time. Um, when I started, I was do doing yoga on a, with an app. So I didn't go to classes. Oh, okay. I went to one class. And then after that, I was just started using an app. So it wasn't something professional at all. It was just like postures. Okay. I would give you one posture. You hold it for like 50 seconds and then moves on to another posture. So okay. it wasn't a flow, I would say. It was just like postures and asanas coming after each other. Okay. So yeah, it was very different, but I really started enjoying the time like with myself. Um, it's a lot of time that I needed 
at, at one point I went through mm-hmm. like a lot of you know hard time where I couldn't be with my own company so I just I felt like you know I need to have people around me I need to keep doing something and I couldn't find stillness mm-hmm. it was really hard like if I'm still if I if I'm at home I feel really anxious as if I need to be somewhere I need to be with like someone and then once I realized I really needed to be my own best friend mm-hmm. I started to really like moving like doing yoga a lot at home t- discovering different flows and mm-hmm. that's when yoga really opened up to me in a sense that's not just you know this is fitness in a more yeah. mindful sense in a more that you know really being aware of my body really being aware of my thoughts and breath as well so it grounded me a lot okay. more and yeah and ever since then I was like falling in love with just being with myself and moving and that's mm-hmm. like such a great thing to do and have so. yeah because well you're with yourself your whole life yeah basically like <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah like you have you have some family and, and friends of course but like you're not with them 24 mm-hmm. 7 and you know life happens sometimes yeah the most important They're relationship is yeah. the one with yourself and then everything else comes after because mm. yeah like after I realized that and I started loving that I was so happy anywhere I would be, you know, mm. and and you wouldn't like once you also develop that relationship, you care a lot less about what like people think or about. So you just yes. become so, you know, ha- happy with who you are and what you are and what you're doing because you just developed a relationship with yourself that everything else doesn't matter. Yeah. And that that's when you attract also a lot better people into your life and, you know, a lot of more community, a lot of more. Uh, things that really will help you in whatever you're trying to achieve later so yeah and I feel like it helps you also not seek validation as much from oh yeah because I know a lot of people now like post things on social media for validation and then they go on like detoxes of no social media and then they go back and it's back to how it was before and oh, it's yes. good to have a, <laughs> a balance and just spend some time with yourself too yeah social media is, yeah. is a tricky one <laughs> yeah it's good but if, if you just if you focus on yourself and you don't worry about it too much like mm-hmm. you'll be fine yeah um mm-hmm. so then how did you get into creating your own company because that's like a big deal <laughs> <laughs> oh i guess <laughs> um Well, it all started with my thesis project at Ryerson University. So I graduated from Ryerson University in Toronto. Mm -hmm. I was going to the fashion school there. I did fashion communication program. But after three years um, of being in university, I thought it was very rule-based in a sense that wasn't my own style. Okay. And I felt a little bit lost because... I was entering university like I was more of a crazy artist like I wouldn't I wouldn't try to fit in with my Mm. art or things like that but then when I went into university it was a lot of projects that had rules yeah and the rules were always like okay you have to do this and you have to do that so I didn't feel motivated enough to to continue my projects sometimes because I didn't feel like I'm the one thinking about them I had things laid out and I just have to do it and it feels a little bit harder to be creative with it so that's when I felt lost I was like what happened to me I tried to like become someone else in the fashion industry um so the fashion industry was great for a couple of years but then after that I just didn't feel uh like me there Mm -hmm. so I decided that I needed to find myself again and find that crazy person again and find how, how can I get more creative again? Because mm-hmm. when I lost my creativity it was because everything was putting me in a box and into like a, s- a simple image that I had to be. So when I wanted to get out of it, I realized I need to go back into like my inner child, like the yeah. childlike self that I had. So yeah, yeah, maybe getting more playful, getting That's more amazing. carefree. Yeah. So I found it also in like children inspiration because mm-hmm. the children really inspired me. Um, I started working with kids as I helped my dad at his taekwondo place. Mm-hmm. I would sometimes help out like teaching children uh, taekwondo and stuff like that. And then it just, I just started loving how children are exactly like. what I'm trying to get back to I was like whoa that's like they're just they they don't even think sometimes they just say they do they and sometimes it's good to do that like yeah sometimes we think too much we we do things because we think like 
oh, what is this person going to say, do? And, and yeah, so I, I loved how children are so creative. They think so differently and outside of the box. Mm -hmm. But as we grow up, we lose that um, yeah. because of society. And that's where I did my thesis project. That uh, It was a collection. It was a handmade fashion collection. Okay. And it was all about children's scribbles. It's called Scribbles, actually. Okay. And that was my mass exodus project in Ryerson. So, yeah, I made this whole, like, Unleash the Inner Child, Unleash the Child Within campaign, mm -hmm. collected drawings from children, and then put them into clothing. So once I got okay. into yoga and wellness, I really wanted to develop this whole thesis brand that I created into something that's accessible to the yoga industry, um, things like that. So I decided to interpret this childlike imagination and put myself as if I'm a child again into these designs that I created, um, inspired by the children's stories or the, their style of drawing. So it was just a different art style that I wanted to create with yeah. my maths. Because so. at the time you were working as an art teacher, so mm -hmm. you used the kids' drawings as inspirations for your Yeah, design? it was it was mostly the kids' like stories okay. and drawings. So I didn't really like it's not completely children's designs yeah. on the mat. It's it's just um, based on what it, what would I do if I'm a child again as an artist. Okay. So uh, but soon enough, we're trying to you know collaborate with an organization and get children to empower them to be the artists. So that mm. we just since we launched on Kickstarter, we try to really um, have all the right steps to take before we do that with you know children illustrating the actual design. Yeah, because there's a lot of things to first like get through so we can be able to get the children's designs on the yeah on the yeah on the products so so <laughs> far okay i'm just gonna go through a list of things you have available you have t-shirts available right that mm -hmm. have like yeah. creative designs or like cute little sayings you have leggings that are actually made from recycled water bottles yes which those. is kind of crazy and cool <laughs> And you have um, sustainable yoga mats, right? Which mm -hmm. is like your main focus at the moment. Yes, the yoga okay. mats are our main uh, big product. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of traction and it's very unique right now in the industry. So it's a cork and natural rubber yoga mat. Um, and the designs are very different than some things you see <laughs> uh, because they're very unique and quirky. So we go yeah, with the idea quirky. of naive. <laughs> Quirky Literally. cork. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's why I, I love saying that word. I'm like, yeah. it's cork, but it's quirky. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, the word that we kind of like go by is naive. It's like, you know, just a really nice, innocent, naive sense. So it like really triggers a little bit of imagination and creativity. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a lot more playful than being serious about, you know, the whole small designs of, you know, the moon or dream catcher that is really big in the spiritual community mm -hmm. uh we wanted to still keep it more playful and imaginative in a different way in an artistic way so okay mm -hmm. and i know cork has a lot of amazing properties so like what is so special about these mats with cork why not get like mm -hmm. your super cheap mat at the <laughs> store next door that's I don't, what's the material called PVC, uh, PVC. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of other materials too, like PVC TPE all the okay. other synthetic materials so yeah. the thing about cork and natural rubber rubber is that they're completely natural so mm -hmm. they will go back to earth and biodegrade uh, cork itself is really great with sweat so when you're slipping mm -hmm. you I mean when you're sweating <laughs> yeah you don't really slip so yeah it's amazing you don't have to use a towel um just a lot of people slip it over their towels and things like that so the cork is perfect for mm -hmm. sweat and it's also antimicrobial so even when you're sweating you know things sometimes smell bad and it's not hygienic so you have to keep cleaning your mat every time mm -hmm. after practice so cork is antimicrobial and it makes things so much easier because you don't really have to clean it all the time it's okay. already hygienic um you just lay it out to dry and sometimes you could just spray some water a little bit of organic soap every once in a while so not so much but like water is great mm -hmm. too with it um yeah and the trees also to the way the cork is stripped from the trees uh it's stripped after uh, around 20 years like 20 oh, okay. to 25 years so the 
tree's already mature mm -hmm. and then after that the tree's not cut down it's just stripped and then the bark regenerates mm -hmm. so there's actually this myth that um cork is endangered oh okay yeah so a lot of that. people are like oh the wine industry are is stopping making cork cork stoppers because it's endangered but in oh. reality it's actually not because cork trees when we strip them they actually regenerate cork because they go through like um a fear like they're like they're trying to protect themselves so they mm -hmm. regenerate more cork so it's actually a lot better for a cork because it's it keeps regenerating okay. and um yeah and the wine industry just stopped doing cork because it's probably getting a little more expensive for them to oh. just harvest so rather and than I guess that it's probably like more complicated to open in general yeah so they just get foam for them, it's just easier to use a, a man-made material like foam oh, to, you know, to okay. to get a fake cork. Oh, they just okay. use man-made materials, and it's easier than, you know, getting an actual okay. stripping. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> nice. So, yeah, I know um, some people might think that it's a little pricier, because obviously mm -hmm. it's pricier than your normal, like, I guess, toxic <laughs> plastic thing. Um but you're actually very like competitively priced compared to other cork mm. companies, cork mat companies. Yeah, so other a lot of cork mats around mm. uh, run over a hundred US dollars, sometimes oh, from a hundred wow. to one twenty. Especially also okay. if there's a design on it. So we really wanted it to be accessible for more people since it's like really based on imagination and creativity. Yeah. Um, so our price point is around uh, right now around. It depends on the thickness okay. of the mats, but it would go from like seventy nine US dollars to eighty five. Okay, um, yeah, and you get the discount the with the My Best Life. Yeah, you get a discount, so <laughs> it's actually such a like a, yeah. such a great price. Yeah. Um, we do, yeah, we're introducing different thicknesses and such, so the prices may go up if, like, if we bring different products and different new mm -hmm. things. But right now, they're very yeah great price that are more accessible for people to. Yeah, especially if you're also starting yoga and you're going through hot yoga. Um, it's good to have a good mat. It motivates you to, yeah, to go to yoga actually, class. Like <laughs> getting your mat, because basically I, I had a yoga mat and I was intending to go to a yoga class. And my sister's cat ate the mat because I don't, I, he just eats things like it, <laughs> he thinks he's a puppy or something. Um, so yeah, she bought me a scoria mat and that actually motivated me to like do the free trial at my yo local yoga place so that yeah. was cool yeah it's a great motivation it's like okay i yeah. have this really cool yoga mat i want to like go and try it out and it's just it motivates you and if the mat yeah. is you know good during your practice you start feeling like oh i want to go back on it again well yeah. because personally to me like a yoga mat is like my second home so i just like i really want it to be inspiring mm -hmm. because that's where it all was created. I was like, okay, why a yoga mat? Because I, I just really wanted more inspiration on on the mat. Even though, you know, it's about being mindful and stuff, I just thought I really like to get playful in my practice because mm -hmm. I, I like to play music. I like to really get into my body. I like to get into my, you know, mind and thoughts sometimes. But it just it's just having something inspiring to look at and something very innocent in a way that uh, really brings me back to, like, who I am. It's okay. like the innocence. It doesn't have to be something so serious kind of thing. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I felt so special when I was at the classes oh. with this mat. Because <laughs> in general, they have blocks for you mm. to help with your practice. And those are made of cork. Yeah, there's cork. For, things. I guess, the antimicrobial reasons. But, yeah, I felt so special and, like, <laughs> official. Oh, I have, like, the cork mat. <laughs> you know? Yes. So, yeah, it was cool. Mm. And, okay, you mentioned there are different thicknesses. So why would someone want to have a thin mat or why would someone want to have a thicker mat? Okay, so we do have, yeah, different thicknesses. We're working on bringing a little more thicknesses too. Mm -hmm. So there is a 4.5 millimeter one and then there's a 3.5 right now that we're selling. Uh, 3.5 is still cushioning. Like that's, I believe it's one of the ones you have. It might go, yeah, it's okay. it's cushioning. Uh, the the one that's 4.5 it could go really well to have you know if you have knee problems oh, okay, and yeah. your knees hurt when you get onto your hands and knees or anything like that or any joints also wrists so it really helps a lot with the cushioning and yeah 
yeah, any you problems. Were, you were telling me earlier um, that you did a few pop-up shops and like especially people 40 and over were asking you for all the thick ones because mm-hmm. it really helped with their knees. So yeah that's amazing yeah yeah they're like <laughs> they were telling me their story is like oh when you grow older <laughs> you really need like that cushioning because the knees they're not gonna like yeah. be so good <laughs> like oh okay well we're gonna get more thick thick ones too yeah but yeah and then also if we're trying to introduce also a thinner one because mm-hmm. the 3.5 is perfect like cushioning mm-hmm. i find um yeah but if you have the knee problems your knees or wrists really hurt then a thicker one is a little better Mm -hmm. but also the thinner ones then 3.5 becomes really thin but it's a good travel map so it's easy to take to the airport and stuff i personally don't really take a travel mat when i travel (laughs) because i just love to have a really good mat when i travel like a really good cushioning okay so So, yeah like the 3.5 i would take with me when i travel too even though it's still Mm -hmm. thick and heavy sometimes um I just take it on the airplane, like carry it on with my laptop bag. And that's perfect because I can just do yoga in the airport or like get my practice on anywhere. And it's not going to feel like, oh, I'm on a really bad mat just because I'm traveling. So it's so you've better. done yoga in the airport? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's really like empty, I sometimes I try not to in front of people. So if it's yeah. really empty and then there's a corner, I would take a corner oh, on because okay. I need my stretch. Like it's so hard. Honestly, <laughs> when you're on a plane for so long mm-hmm. or or you're just waiting around to get on the plane, mm-hmm. it's good to stretch. Yeah, that's. I never even yeah. thought of that. Yeah, and no, airport yoga is so good. Yeah, yeah sometimes because yeah, you fly it as long and then you're just like, I need to like get get out do move yeah that's really good yeah okay so (laughs) did you say you offered um some smaller than 3.5 um not currently Mm -hmm. but we're working on yeah maybe soon to get ones that are a little thinner just for a travel mat a lot of people still like to carry the really thin travel mats Mm -hmm. so if that's like you then we'll hopefully offer that soon (laughs) okay awesome Mm -hmm. and i know um you told me that every day in general you're working on like looking at new materials sustainable materials so Mm -hmm. you don't have to reveal everything because i know it's in the works um but i just wanted to mention that so people know that there's more products coming yeah okay so that is a long so working on materials is a long tough journey um that it feels like I'm just taking on this journey even though before I was working with the cork and natural rubber it was a lot easier but right now to innovate material is Mm -hmm. a lot harder so it does take years to come up with like a new material and bring it to the world Uh, it will take a lot of research Mm -hmm. development and yeah it's just I think it's an up and down journey but it's in the works as we work on uh, material innovation um we're working on things that are shorter term because I feel like material is also like a long journey yeah so uh shorter term such as activewear and hopefully to introduce introduce that in the fall um so an activewear collection for like leggings may right now we're seeing if the sports bra are also going to work but mostly leggings and um they're gonna be really great we're hoping so they're gonna be really mm-hmm. different um but at the same time very easy to wear anywhere like easy to wear to the streets to work uh but still creative and have a chad like scribbly touch which okay. is our yeah signature <laughs> and are those gonna be made of plastic bottles or different materials um we're looking into sustainable materials definitely okay. so like either recycled yeah they recycled polyester or things like hemp but we haven't okay. really yet oh, would be found it yeah so mostly yeah we're trying to keep it sustainable in the sense of recycling the material mm-hmm. or getting hemp um going it depends on yeah it depends on our cuts and designs oh, so, okay yeah. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. And I know recently you went to a yoga retreat in Guatemala. Mm-hmm. And um, did you want to just shout out the discount code? Oh, yeah. So I went to <laughs> a yoga teacher training. Um, mm-hmm. It was in Guatemala. It was an amazing yoga teacher training that combines permaculture principles. So you get a touch of introduction to permaculture. So what is permaculture? Uh, so permaculture is the design of basically sustainable farming in a sense so having a garden that has many functions and reducing waste as much as possible having more functionality uh using all energy types all energy in such a sustainable way that like you're not using energy like you're using energy wisely so Mm -hmm. 
really looking into what the weather is like what the habitat of different plants needs and then placing the plants in, in areas that they're going to grow and help other plants as well okay even when you're farming chicken for example you, you're you want them to have more than one functionality not just like producing eggs or not just giving meat for example mm -hmm. you, you're really looking at the chicken as a whole also as a way of energy so the chicken moves um it poos <laughs> so basically they can go around and eat the weeds so like the chicken oh, okay. can be used yeah to eating the weeds so they clean up some areas or for, for fertilization basically yeah pooing and using that compost <laughs> for the other plants and such okay. so using yeah using things and energies very wisely Okay, and they had that um, together with the yoga teaching program. Yeah, so we learned a lot of the principles. Mm -hmm. um, the PDC is different, so the permaculture certificate is an addition, but you still get a touch of permaculture, um, practicals, and theory as well. So the yoga teacher training happens, yeah, in Guatemala, I believe, the second one. Yeah, in the same space. So I have a, yeah, if you want to, if you're interested to check it out, it's called awakenspirityoga.com. Okay. They're a great bunch of women, uh, very talented, very wise women who ran this retreat. And the code is SEED222YK. So that's S-E-E-D-222YK. And then obviously <laughs> if you're driving and stuff and if you forget what the code is, you can always go to our website at www.mybestlifepodcast.com. And just mm -hmm. check out the episode with Yara. It will be in our description. So yeah, and all to the mention, codes will be in the description. That's two hundred and twenty-two dollars off. Oh, cool. <laughs> Believe in the ancient numbers. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how was your experience there? Oh yeah, it was amazing. I really enjoyed being in the in the by the lake. So it was by okay. Lake Atitlan. Um, the lake is such a great place to be it's an indigenous also culture um and we did we experienced a lot of different things that the locals also do um such as the mayan calendar we did a cacao ceremony based on the mayan calendar so okay. each one has a different mayan sign um the community there was really strong and great so a lot of events from drum circles to ecstatic dance to kirtan um, a lot of can you explain some of this because yeah like, okay know, like the <laughs> ceremony or the okay ton okay thing. so cacao ceremony is um uh, is basically the mayans um would do a ceremony how do i explain this <laughs> so yeah you would do they would do a ceremony uh bring people together and kind of calling on the ancestors blessing them it's kind of like a prayer to the ancestors prayer to okay. the dad prayer to you know gratitude it's it's a very sacred uh ceremony in a sense so we just sit around a fire mm -hmm. um yeah and you throw some things to the fire and yeah we did a cacao ceremony based on that mayan sign within that day so it was emotion which is water okay and that was actually my sign so i was like oh, wow cool. a ceremony for me <laughs> but yeah no it was it was yeah it was a great experience it was very different also than cacao ceremonies that i would go to in like toronto it's mm -hmm. um different because oh it was they have some here um it depends so there's different events where yeah there was like a small cacao ceremony bringing everyone together drinking cacao so the cacao is a heart opener okay. so um there's a lot of cacao trees in guatemala so mm -hmm. a lot of people here bring back some cacao yeah. and they bring in people together and um just in a circle uh, we drink heart opener and then after that that's how also ecstatic dance so there's a lot of ecstatic dance events as well happening in toronto but also in guatemala so um basically it would involve cacao as well so okay. it's a heart opener and then after drinking the cacao in a circle you dance and move without kind of sad what is it called sorry ecstatic dance ecstatic like oh, happy like dance happy. <laughs> okay, okay. yeah okay. it's a lot better than going to a club okay <laughs> so, so you're just like <laughs> dancing like however you want you can dance yeah, like crazy yeah however you want it's usually does not involve like talking to people so you just okay you connect with the energy of the room mm -hmm. and you dance like to cool. amazing music you feel the vibrations you 
I love it. <laughs> it's a lot of movement. Um, okay. Yeah, basically dancing with a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and what else? Kirtan is a form of, um, it's a form of, so it's part of devotional yoga. Okay. So it's called Bhakti Yoga. So Bhakti Yoga is a part of the yoga philosophy as well. So it's devotional. It's basically believing in higher powers. Mm-hmm. Um you know it involves prayer so the thing is with kirtan it's basically also bringing people together and chanting so chanting is a really big one so you're chanting mm-hmm. names of different you know yeah but okay. yeah it's a devotional type of ceremony okay um is that is that weird to you if you like yeah actually okay yeah we can talk about that because if you're like chanting this these spiritual mm-hmm. names but you're you're it don't was, you have like a different religion Mm -hmm. than this yoga yeah that's okay that's a great actually great question because my first kirtan experience it Mm -hmm. was in guatemala and we were going to kirtan um because it was also part of our curriculum Mm -hmm. we were going on fridays there's a really great ashram there right by the corner so um on fridays i'm sorry so we just looked up what (laughs) ashram um, is on Wikipedia. It says traditionally an ashram, sometimes also ashram or ashramam, is a spiritual hermitage or a monastery in Indian religions. So yeah, so it's a place of prayer, place. lots of spirituality and me- meditation. Okay. And, yeah. Okay. Chanting. So, like, how did you feel with all these like different ceremonies and all this like? spiritual side of this yoga if you're like grew up with so yeah i grew up mindset. as a muslim yeah uh, but to me like i love to explore obviously all religions because mm. i feel like they all so one thing i really realized in mm-hmm. guatemala because i explore explore these religions explore <laughs> these religions mm-hmm. as well as like it's not even a religion because it's not like the yogic philosophy is not really religious it's Mm -hmm. really based on spirituality yeah so and yoga can be done by mm -hmm. any person of any religion it doesn't have to be something wrong or whatever yeah so the devotion part of yoga is about really prayer and believing in a higher power Mm -hmm. uh but it it depends on yeah it depends on different things i guess because um yeah when i when i went there i realized how you know all religions religions in a sense or Mm -hmm. prayer or devotional they really all talk about the same thing and it really made me feel so much more just connected because i grew up Mm. as a muslim but i never had a problem really with like my religion my i wouldn't want to say just also my religion because Mm -hmm. i mean i just felt like i don't have to define myself with a religion you know i just be like i am a muslim and that's it and i can't like look away from any other thing Mm -hmm. um i found myself a lot more connected when i realized from every other philosophy from mayan from even ayurveda like which is just uh an ancient philosophy of basically healing and balance within your body um so everything in the end preaches the same thing from oneness to really like you know connecting within yourself and other so we're all connected Mm -hmm. um yeah and in the end it really preaches the same thing really connected to nature in the end so like basically within ayurveda um tells you how what you should kind of do in a sense to balance your body it's really but why waking up with the sun or before the sun mainly so okay and like washing your face and washing your ears and then getting your you know tongue scraping nasal all that type of stuff i was like wow it's it's really close to you know islamic religion when you wake up before the, the sunrise you want to pray for sun sunrise prayer oh, okay. and yeah. basically to pray in you know the islamic religion you're washing your face you have to be hygienic you wash your hands so there's just a certain way to wash things and then you end up praying and okay. prayer in like islam is really close to a sun salutation okay <laughs> it's very real <laughs> you're just like up then down then kind of like in child's pose and then you go back on your knees and then you go back up so in the end i just really felt way more connected in like basically that religion is just 
it's really just like a structure to just live life a little bit more connected Mm -hmm. and they all preach the same thing from kindness like the yogic philosophy is very also close to that so once you get really like into the spiritual side in the end i feel like all of them just say the same thing and Mm -hmm. that's why i don't like to say i like define myself with only one religion or say i'm this type but i do like what religions do talk about or preach because a lot of people do take them out of context you know and then blame religion yeah but that's a different topic that's completely (laughs) different so it's i just feel like they're all connected in the end Mm -hmm. all these religions are really really like positive like they all say the same thing and really go with nature's time clock same with um yeah so was it hard at the beginning to like be open-minded or it was um i felt yeah actually when i went to kirtan the first time Mm -hmm. i felt at the beginning a little uncomfortable i was like "Hmm, this is different you know like i'm Mm -hmm. saying things in sanskrit that i had no idea what i'm saying like i'm chanting names of goddesses names of yeah yeah and i didn't know what i was saying but in the Mm -hmm. end i like I let go like Mm -hmm. just not even on the end like within five minutes because Mm -hmm. I really connected to the chance um I felt like such a great release by putting voice out so by really like being in a room and just releasing voice it's Mm -hmm. amazing and a lot of people don't do it like when we start a yoga class and everyone chants om for example Mm -hmm. it's really hard here to come to a yoga class in Toronto and chant in the beginning because people get a little scared so it's not so inclusive when you do that I guess <laughs> so as a teacher okay. sometimes it's harder to get depends where I am I wouldn't like make people chant well, um, I think saying om is like kind of a universal yeah thing it's it has, <laughs> it's nothing controversial about it so. yeah it's, it's honestly it's not even the controversial part I think mm-hmm. people get really uncomfortable with releasing voice okay. and they get a little bit weirded out so okay one thing with kirtan that I loved is mm-hmm. that you know when you chant with a lot of people the vibrations and the sounds of these sayings just yeah. felt really good like the vibrational essence of all of it just made me feel really good peaceful uh and that's actually what matters in the end i'm like okay i am chanting these things Mm -hmm. maybe i don't know what they say but i'm feeling really peaceful i'm feeling really really so much better by releasing voice and by chanting and by yeah it was just so good and i i just loved it ever since i'm like okay Mm -hmm. sometimes sometimes i just need to let go and if it feels good then nothing is harm like no harm is done there yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be i'm getting against religion or i'm mm-hmm. believing in something that i shouldn't be and that's like also terrible so to not like be open-minded to try these things and see how they just feel yeah so. and you can still believe whatever you want to believe just because you're practicing yoga doesn't mean <laughs> yeah it's bad so yeah actually chanting is so good for your vocal cords like it helps you connect to your breath and it helps you warm up in like such a good way especially in the mornings Mm -hmm. like before you start talking and stuff yeah no it's amazing and the vibrations of the chant so there's different chants for for example each chakra so it opens up different channels in your body to you know opening up the heart or opening up the sacral opening up your third eye (laughs) so yeah it's the chants are really great vibrations to awaken the body and to move this energy so it's amazing okay I think teachers mm-hmm. should actually chant <laughs> like in the mornings because you know how many teachers lose their voice by like like teaching all day it's, yeah it's, it's a lot yeah those, oh yeah I don't know how yeah. teachers do it I'm like one hour of yoga mm-hmm. <laughs> by actually half of the class in the middle of it I'm like oh no I'm like my voice is tired I don't know if I can continue this whole yoga class just using I'm your just breath pretty new. yeah even I was doing, you know, they have those master classes. Yeah. Um, I took the master class with Christina Aguilera, the program. <gasps> yeah, and she actually says that the biggest regret she had was that she didn't start yoga and physical stuff sooner, and that that's helped her so much. Wow. So, yeah. Ever since, ever yeah. since I got a lot more connected with voice, mm-hmm. I feel a lot more comfortable talking and saying and expressing, also my communication with people. Because actually, like growing up. I had a, always a problem with talking to people about things. Like, okay. I would be more, I'm not like an introvert per se, but it would 
keep so many things in i wouldn't okay. know how to talk about things like you know problems or things i'm going through or mm-hmm. open up to people so it's like if i'm and then like intimate friendship relationship it was so hard for me to open up and just talk about some things on my mind Mm -hmm. but i think just by connecting with voice and movement too it it really just opens up that like opens up a lot of the channels and it makes it more like oh i can talk about this and i'm not scared to talk about it you know yeah (laughs) oh my god i I want to do yoga right now (laughs) (laughs) yes right here i can lead (laughs) let's do it you know what i actually want to have a segment (laughs) with yara like teaching us like basic yoga poses and even like inversions and stuff because I don't even know where to start with that inversions if you don't know what that is it's like basically you're upside down yeah you're literally getting inverted (laughs) like it's yeah being upside down also I'm I'm just gonna say also makes you really happy (laughs) for some reason like I don't know yeah blood goes to your head and you you feel crazy and you start doing things like it's just as of what your heart desires and mm-hmm. just sometimes people don't understand and you're you like, know what you happy. feel like a kid because i remember the only times i've been like upside down is you know when you're a kid and you're like flipping off of the couch mm-hmm. or something you're or you're doing somersaults or yeah i don't know like i now that i think about i don't do somersaults or like i'm upside down mm-hmm. anymore it's so good to yeah to be. <laughs> yeah it rushes the blood to your head gets you a lot more energetic i actually just came back from a two-hour workshop of handstand journey okay so i'm still trying to hold my handstand but <laughs> it's just two hours of being upside down after it i'm like whoa like i have a rush right now i don't know okay. like what i feel yeah. <laughs> it's a little weird i think two but, hours is a long time to be upside down yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was we did a lot of drills and it was fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so yeah obviously that segment will not be in a podcast format because it's a visual medium so that will be on youtube so Make sure you check out My Best Life Podcast on YouTube and you will see Yara yes. teaching us how to do that. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. That's so, I'm excited too. Like That's going to be so fun. Yeah. I just like to be upside down. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah. I I feel like I'm, I might be a little like, it might be embarrassing me trying to do all this stuff, but you know what? We're kids. Kids aren't afraid to learn things. So one step at a time. Even like handstand, handstand, anything like being mm-hmm. inverted, takes a long time. It's it's like learning how okay. to walk. You know, you're a little kid. Yeah. You walk. You fall. You walk. You fall. You can never really walk fully, and then, and then you're up, and then you can walk. So yeah. it, it's a long time. It's not like within a day you can get it. It's it's a long journey. So people shouldn't be disappointed when they try it and they're like, I yeah. can't do this. I can't even like put my legs up. It just, it's it's a long journey. So sometimes you even got to start by not being really upside down. So just mm-hmm. a downward dog is an inversion. So your head, oh, like your, okay. your blood is rushing through your head. You're kind of inverted. So it's an inversion actually. Um, oh, okay. There's a lot of inversions that are not really like completely being upside down. Mm-hmm. Uh, starting with a crow, for example. Like if you're in crow, okay. like any arm balance. Know. So it's, yeah, I'm like, I, I can't show it here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's just basically being on your hands. So okay, you'll show us that yeah. in the video. Okay. So anything that it doesn't have to be actually being, mm-hmm. you know, in a headstand or anything like that. Uh, arm balances, just starting with different drills could really help just getting there. So okay, cool. <laughs> and I think that example of like a kid or a baby learning to walk is so like amazing because. A lot of people as adults, we kind of give up too soon, I think, oh, which yeah. is, or people are like afraid to do things because they're not going to be good at them. They just want to be good at it automatically, which doesn't happen. It's not like you can pick up a piano and be like a grandmaster. Like even yeah. kids who are like, like prodigies or how do you say it? I don't know. <laughs> prodigies? Is that the word? I don't even know. <laughs> You know, like yeah. the kids who are like super masterful, <laughs> they've they've practiced a lot, you know. And when a kid is learning to walk, they never give up. Yeah, they it's just so do true. it until they can actually walk. Because yeah, when we're adults, we're literally like, oh, I am not good at this. We're so good at saying I am not good at this. But why yeah. don't you try and practice? Because trying and practicing literally gets you where you want. And that's a lot of thing I hear also about getting people into like, for example, a yoga class. Mm-hmm. Um, so I teach it at an incubator. Um, it's the fashion zone. So Ryerson fashion zone. Okay. Uh, very great 
co-sharing workspace that provides resources and such so yeah I'm, I'm teaching right now yoga classes there and it's a challenge to get entrepreneurs who are really okay. into their laptops or all day to like really oh, come yeah. into a yoga class because the first thing I hear from so many people I am not good at yoga or I'm not flexible or it's, it's really you hear it all the time and it's not just yoga obviously for so many things people just say I am not good at this but they just define themselves in a box that I am not good at it. That's so, so bad. Because if you say that, well, of course it's true. Yeah. Like, whatever <laughs> you believe is true. Like, if... Mm-hmm. But if, you, if you're if you just, like, open-minded and are like, okay, like, I'm not getting this now. But you know what? It's fun. Or, or maybe it's... Mm-hmm. I just want to challenge myself. Then you yeah. start getting it. That's actually, yeah, number one thing I love about yoga is that everything is literally one step at a time because it's like i want to do this posture but i'm not going to do this now and i know it it's like today i cannot get into this posture and Mm -hmm. i won't but i will try to lead to this posture and it doesn't have to be me trying the posture per se but working on areas that will lead me to that Mm -hmm. and just like knowing that the practice today is where it's at it really gives you comfort so with yoga really helps you to really come back to your journey right now where are you right now and it's yeah. okay to accept it right it's now good, because like, you know check in point yeah you know like tomorrow is going to be better and then the next day is going to be better but mm-hmm. sometimes you also have bad days but it's okay yeah of you course. get there <laughs> like some days i don't know maybe i don't know you're recovering from a cold or or you just like got, went through a breakup of course you're not going to be or i don't know mm-hmm. whatever is going on in your life you might not have be as good as you were like yesterday or two days ago and that's okay so. yeah like yeah even with with things like yeah stretches and stuff one mm-hmm. day feels so good you're like oh, i'm doing this so well like mm-hmm. my body just opens up and then next day you're, the body's just so closed and yeah. you just accept it you either rest or you do something slow mm-hmm. and then next day might be just better your mat is still there your yeah. practice is still your there. your scoria mat <laughs> is still there <laughs> And yes, then, <laughs> and then yeah gradually you get better and better like i see mm-hmm. so many pictures on instagram of like um it's let's say like it says like 2014 and there's like a, a person trying to do pose and it's like not even close and then it's like 2017 or whatever like it's so much closer and then it's like today and then they can do the pose super well or whatever yeah transformation so, yeah <laughs> sometimes it takes a while but that's mm-hmm that's life you know? yeah that's literally with everything and yeah. that's with every project so that's where the struggle comes also with starting a company and things like that because yeah. it's like okay you still have to mar- you have tomorrow so like do what you can today tomorrow comes and then mm. you do it again and then slowly you gradually get better you gradually improve the products or improve everything and things come in the end but it takes time and it's hard yeah <laughs> So, so it's like a yoga flow. Yeah. <laughs> the whole life is like a yoga flow. So what's the biggest <laughs> lesson you've learned from starting a brand new company? Hmm. Oh my gosh. Maybe patience. Honestly, sometimes I get really impatient. Mm-hmm. I just want things to happen and I want things to come. It's like, oh, I'm doing so much hard work. Why is this not working yeah. out? And I think really patience, like just learning how to take it one step at a time and still come back to Mm self-care is really important because yeah yeah sometimes I just really ignore self-care and some days I just don't step on my mat because I'm like I can't I just have all this stuff to do um yeah patience is still a work in progress (laughs) well of course oh my gosh we're all life learners like we constantly need to improve so Mm -hmm course we're going to be learning new lessons all the time yeah i also learned yeah Yeah. like i said um that it's actually not a race (laughs) so (laughs) not rushing but yeah a lot of times i still do it's a work in progress Mm -hmm. as well so yeah it's you don't have to finish everything within one day (laughs) yeah or yeah because it gets hard when you start a business because you have so many things that you could do Mm -hmm. and there's an overwhelm of information overwhelm of opportunities overwhelm of things and then the more you talk to people the more they tell you why sh- why shouldn't you do this and do that and and then there's like a more overwhelm and you're like yeah. oh my gosh i'm getting to it and then you're like it gets really hard to just get one thing done sometimes off the to-do list and it's harder to organize so really like organizing things as well as taking it 
you know, not racing. You don't have to do it today. It's really good to know. And it, I think for that, what you were mentioning, the most important thing is prioritizing. Mm-hmm. Like, what's the most important right now? And then, like, it's good to listen to people, but you have to kind of know your vision and what's most important for your business right now. Yes. Actually, no one will ever know your business as much as you do. Like, yeah. Because if you're starting a startup or any, like, business, Mm -hmm. you kind of live it every day. Like, you know, you see the results, the feedback, and you wake up thinking about it. You go to sleep thinking about Mm -hmm. it. And so when when there's an outside source, it's really great to get feedback from people. uh, But sometimes also people could really distract because... yeah they sometimes they don't know your business as much as you do yeah and you know what's best for you and for your business and your vision and then there could be distraction of you know why don't you do that and this but then you know the market you know like you know a lot of more things about your business when you live it because you're living your business yeah (laughs) actually that happened to me with music like i would like start creating a song and then i'd ask some people their feedback but then i realized the people i'm asking are not the people who listen to this music like this person who listens to this rapper and I don't know these like heavy metal bands or I don't know whatever like let's say they're like a 35 year old male who's Mm -hmm. interested in this they're not necessarily gonna like my music so I shouldn't be asking them for their opinion oh my gosh yes that's so true because yeah when when I ask people obviously yeah who aren't my you know yeah your market, target market yeah then they also wouldn't know but then the feedback is sometimes like yeah not not the best quality feedback because they're not really the people who are gonna listen or who yeah. are gonna practice on this yoga mat or yeah so it's, it's really challenging also because sometimes we do ask these questions because we just want validation but we internally yeah. know like we know what we want we know the That's answer true. but we just get so scared to like go with the answer <laughs> like we know we got to do this but we ask so many questions sometimes they're like oh we just like need to validate that this is this is the one or we just want a mm-hmm. sounding board you know yeah. like to say it out loud and like mm-hmm. to have someone listening you know yeah it's really good also to exchange ideas though with mm-hmm. people because I, I find a lot with myself sometimes I just talk myself into the things and I I need to also sometimes talk to more people about ideas because they really help if just you have a listener, you know? You talk mm. to your ideas out loud. And then, yeah, it really helps to have someone to just listen. Sometimes it's good to have the feedback. And sometimes it's good just to have someone, yeah, like shooting out your ideas and throwing ideas back. So it's mm-hmm. just basically an idea brainstorming session. So that's sometimes what I actually try to do with um, my team. So okay. there's a few... Uh, I have a few, like, students from Ryerson who are very helpful and they're okay. been interning with Scoria and nice. yeah sometimes it's just like we gather and we just talk about ideas so just talk about something or an idea that of a campaign idea or product idea and then we just shoot things back it doesn't have to mm-hmm. even have a purpose fully but just a brainstorming session gets things out of you know your head or yeah, your and paper when I talk with someone I think of so many ideas that I'm like, wow, like that's a brilliant idea. Mm-hmm. But by myself, I didn't think of it. Yeah. You know? And then they build. So like you yeah. shoot something out and the other person builds something on it. And then you're like, whoa, yeah. this is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it comes from something to something completely different. Yeah. And it just the... builds and builds. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> ideas are so great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's amazing that you got these interns. Like, that's such a great idea. How did you find them um, think so of that I, idea? Since Scoria is part of the fashion zone, so mm-hmm. we're, like, uh, on the Ryerson fashion zone, Okay. Uh, it's a lot easier to have resources, so student interns really also need the hours. So I went to the fashion communication program. Okay. And to graduate, you have to complete 400 hours of internship. So as oh, long as, okay. you know, you take some... Uh, you take a student who you really help really train, uh, give them the experience... Um, and I find that it's really helpful for the students. So I interned yeah. a lot, actually, also during my years at Ryerson. Okay. I maybe did more than four internships. I did so many internships. But yeah, yeah a lot of them are very great because you gain experience and you start knowing what you like, what you don't like. So one thing I really love to try out also is that like being a mentor for the students because 
you know, it, it's really helpful to sometimes have someone to talk about. So whatever they want to do in their life mm-hmm. kind of like also helps them with it. So let's say if they wanted to start a business or have a passion, it's good to, you know, help them with that. It's like, what do you like to do and what are your strengths? So yeah. and then I give them kind of tasks that are related to their passions or related to their what they like to do in the future. So that's so smart mm-hmm. and like that's such a win-win yeah like, it's yeah. awesome because yeah you really help some st- like the students and then as well they they help you back of obviously they're <laughs> amazing so nice mm-hmm. awesome what if someone um is like i have no idea what my passion is how do oh. i find my passion <laughs> <laughs> okay i think the best thing is to find what you don't like like what you don't want to do and that's one big thing i got I learned from Ryerson. It's like okay. I went through all these like terrible things, for personal things where I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't like this. I don't like that. And I mm-hmm. went through like a phase where I'm so depressed because I hated the industry and I hated the fashion mm-hmm. industry and I didn't want to do that and I didn't want to do the merchandising part. So from that, I really found what I liked. So just like really trying out different things and knowing yeah. it's okay like to not know what you like, but just being open minded to trying different things, putting yourself out there um, for all experiences. Yeah, sometimes you just have to like really throw yourself out like, I, let's try this, let's try that. And from that, something will spark and be like, I love this. So thinking about something when you do it, you really get really happy. Um, actually, last year, I thought like I'm so passionate about like acro yoga because I <laughs> I went to this acro yoga class out of nowhere. I'm like, okay, I don't have a part. I'm going to go with myself okay, and see what this class is about. It's a partner, you know, acro yoga is partner yoga. Mm-hmm. So you basically just, it, I don't know if it's a yoga itself. It's like just acrobatics. You're playing. I love, say play because <laughs> it's really playful. Yeah. It's like doing an airplane like with, oh with a child, God. you know? It's like the <laughs> Superman thing when like, the parent is on their back and have yeah. their arms it's like up when and their legs or their knees up and you're just like the kid is the superman on top of the yes oh <laughs> it's actually God. called called bird in acro so oh, you, really it's yeah it's like what your parents lifted you up and things it's really oh, fun because so you're like fun. oh i miss that i wish i could do that right now yeah come join <laughs> <laughs> i go to like acro yoga classes every week sometimes it depends now because okay. i'm so busy but then I'll feel like a little kid again (laughs) yeah I think once I found that and was like wow this is like amazing because it fed like all my passion of being upside down of play (laughs) of like movement and I don't know I just got really excited about it I was like yes I'm gonna like do acro all the time and that's something of passion but I'm like how do I I can't maybe turn that into a business but it's good Mm -hmm. to have passions that make you happy also along the side it doesn't have to be like your career or so like yeah finding things that make you happy is really important and yeah. I was really scared. Like, I went, wh- my first, like, acro yoga, I was really scared. I'm like, I'm going alone with no partner, and this is a partner class. But it was so open. It was just an open community with, like, everyone doesn't come with a partner. Everyone just has, like, people you tr- switch partners. So what I really okay. learned from that is, like, just putting myself out there. Like, I want to try this. It doesn't. I don't have to, like, call someone and be like, hey, come with me. And then I have to really depend on their, like, time and no, such yeah so yeah just doing these things really just open up so many like so many opportunities and so much of discovering discovery like discovering your passion and adventure just by even like doing it alone and it's being great and I think that was one of my happiest like months because I was like oh I went on an adventure alone and I'm really <laughs> happy like I was just like you know trying to adventure with myself and yeah. that was a part of me that really just wanted to adventure with myself but it's really scary at the beginning. It's like putting yourself in outside of the box. You're like, oh, like I'm doing this alone. And like, it's a weird feeling because we're more used to like, we have to do things with someone or, yeah. yeah so like, or we get lonely or whatever. Yeah. So it's great to like really adventure with yourself. I think that's like one thing I really loved uh, when I started this business. I was like, I'm adventuring with myself. And that's what I wanted, like, it's not what I wanted originally I was like okay maybe I'll try Mm -hmm. so being open to that adventure uh doesn't pull you back from other people people's time or opinion and such because if you're really dependent on like another person to approve what you're doing like let's say for example um you really have been wanting to try I don't know swimming or something like that Mm -hmm. you really wanted to try something but then there's a friend who like would try it with you, but then they keep telling you they're busy every time you tr- try to ask. Yeah. So you're more excited about this thing to try 
more than your friend yeah and then you end up like not doing it or like feeling weird and tied down and you don't meet more people doing it so it's sometimes just being doing putting yourself out there yeah it's just like the best thing because then you grow when you're outside of your comfort zone you experience new Mm -hmm. things you meet new people and like doing things by yourself is such a game changer like (laughs) it's so fun i don't know it's like you're going on a date with yourself oh my gosh yes it's (laughs) actually amazing and sometimes it doesn't tie you down so much because like even if you go to any event or social activity Mm -hmm. um it's great sometimes to also yeah go with your friend but to always just go with your friend it's really harder to also meet new people yeah and do what you like like sometimes what you like is not exactly what another it just like makes you more free in a sense like oh i'm doing this because i want to yeah it's like nice (laughs) a lot of events like like a lot of the times my friends can't go so i just go by myself yeah and people are like oh who did you come with i'm like oh i just went by came by myself <laughs> yeah I, so these people feel so weird fun. when you say that because oh, like really yeah i don't know well, actually it. i other? met mm. i went to a concert by myself well oh a concert okay. like a sitting down concert so that one was beyonce but i went to like a standing up um concert it was a small venue and some guy was just like oh hey like who did you come here with and i was like oh i'm just by myself (laughs) and like i don't know it was so fun just by myself yeah but you were so happy right (laughs) i I was (laughs) he was like oh cool and he was so surprised but i don't know i was having so much fun yeah i think i think no that's amazing like just by really like i I would be like having such a huge smile on my face and like yeah and like when i went we used to go to acro but there was um doomies i don't know if you know doomies so no. it's it's this vegan like junk food restaurant. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's a j- vegan. So they don't they don't even have salads. It's like really junk food, but it's just is the not logo meat. a pig? Um, no, I think it just says Doomies. Okay, because I know yeah. there's some vegan restaurant in Toronto. The logo is a pig for some oh. reason. Oh, I'm not sure. There's yeah. so many now like okay. vegan restaurants. But yeah, Doomies is like the junk food. So you g- basically get a Big Mac um, okay. that's vegan. It's not even on the menu, I think. You just ask for a vegan Big Mac, and then they give you a Big Mac. I would finish my acro class, and it would just Mm -hmm. be like, bye, peace. And I walk over two minutes. It was a Friday night, too. So everyone goes, I think they have drinks, too. So it's like a bar setting as well as like a restaurant setting. Mm -hmm. I would just go sit by the bar and ask for this huge plate of like Big Big Mac and (laughs) fries. And their fries are so good. Like, oh, my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) So really good fries okay they're like buffalo ranch but also like vegan like very fried junky food okay. so i just treat myself i'm like three hours of being upside down and like whatever you just feel so happy and then you go i just like i would literally like want to go by myself mm-hmm. a lot of times they're just like don't even tr- tell people like i would like just walk mm-hmm. and like munch on this huge food and i was like oh this is like the best date for me i was like mm-hmm. this is like amazing date <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I just love being with me sometimes. I'm like, yes. Yeah. And then just like eating the best food. And, like, oh my God. Yeah. Eating good food makes me so happy. Yes. Like <laughs> nothing else. Like, well, other, yeah. some other things make me happy too. But I mean like eating good food, it's just, I'm on such a high yeah. after. I think, I guess you can yeah. be passionate about food. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I like when it's made for me. I oh. think that's better than like, yeah. Cooking it is cool, but it takes so long, but yeah yeah <laughs> when i eat good food oh yeah so i mean good. i think that's a drunk case sometimes i go i'm like if i want junk food but yeah now i i don't know i stopped going there i was mm-hmm. uh, they stopped the acro classes next to doomies oh. <laughs> so no more doomies but you maybe still soon. go yeah maybe i could still go soon i live far so <laughs> yeah are you vegan or no no actually yeah a lot of people ask me what like i eat but mm-hmm. i don't label it any, like anymore um i was a vegetarian for like two years um, but i don't like labels so right okay. now sometimes actually i just eat according to my body i'm like so i'm mostly vegetarian i don't eat any meat or mm-hmm. but i do eat dairy um and sometimes occasionally fish um occasionally if sometimes if i feel like my body really needs meat sometimes like mm-hmm. after two years of being a vegetarian um my body wasn't thriving so much with like um all the muscles stuff that i was doing i would yeah. overwork it and sometimes i just really need some sort of energy mm-hmm. so i ended up yeah sometimes i really occasionally eat like like homemade uh chicken so yeah yeah it really depends but i prefer all vegetarian or even prefer vegan because i just don't like the way things are going right now with oh yeah all the, of this yeah. industry so yeah so i'm mostly like 
whatever I feel that day. <laughs> I think listening to your body is good. Like, I think especially in the summer, I feel like I can do more vegetarian meals. But in the winter, I feel like if I don't eat meat, like my body just doesn't function properly. I don't have energy. Yeah, the thing is, there are a lot of like substitutes and stuff. Mm. And I feel like... But it doesn't... Mm-hmm. I don't know. Everyone's body is different. Everyone's body Some is people, very different. Some people like thrive being mm-hmm. vegetarians. Some yeah. people kind of need a little more... Yeah, help. I think I think it's whatever you feel like you're thriving off. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I feel like I could maybe even thrive as a vegan. Like mm-hmm. if I really get the right supplements because some people don't even need them like they're just like Mm -hmm. oh thriving off of like whatever fruits and vegetables Mm -hmm. but i feel like it's a lot of work right now to like focus on really getting all my nutrition from a vegan diet and it takes a lot more time and energy than just like you know occasionally just getting my you know um whatever food that i can Mm -hmm. get especially when you're on the go all the time your life is not just based on food it's a little harder but yeah, maybe like even there's so many different like root vegetables and even like um, powders and like spirulina that you can add and ghee but- butter yeah. is ghee butter is really good like because it's really good fats for the body and it is really great to also yeah give you the energy kind of like also me um, grounding the body a little uh, yeah just adding things like maca maca too um, just different things that you could basically add but Mm -hmm. it's really hard to keep up with so that's why i don't fully do it (laughs) yeah 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 you're doing what's best for you yeah whatever feels good at that moment (laughs) yeah is there anything you would like to add Uh, (laughs) i kind of feel like we should play a game or something but i I have no games in my head okay we could do like a would you rather okay okay yeah let's play a game (laughs) i love games (laughs) <laughs> I should do this with like all my guests. Yes, you should start this. Um, game episode. <laughs> okay. Wait, I have to like think about this. Maybe I should like okay. Google it or something. Um. Oh, would you rather? Okay. I don't know. Some of these are kind of weird. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna ask you some questions. Okay. okay. okay if you up. could have. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for these fun questions? Oh my gosh, I'm scared. Yes. No. <laughs> Okay, if you could be, have any superpower, what would it be? Flying upside down. <laughs> right now, I don't Flying think. upside down. Only, okay. only you would say upside down. I know down. there's there's more like productive superpowers, <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, like I would love to climb things. I'm really scared of heights, but I always wanted to be able to just climb and be okay. not scared of heights. Like Spider-Man type thing? Yeah, like just have safety to feel like I'm really high and then climb these like things. Okay. I don't know. I know that's not a like productive superpower, which I need right now. Like a productive superpower would be so nice. Like some anything that would make my life easier. But yeah, this would make my life more fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's the best book you've read so far? Um. Or one of them? That's a good question um because i i love a lot of books i would say maybe nelson mandela's okay autobiography okay yeah nelson mandela's long walk to freedom one cats or dogs dogs <laughs> but also <laughs> cats like dog and a cat together <laughs> okay no okay <laughs> if you could be one animal what animal would you be can it be depending on the season? So maybe like uh, <laughs> <laughs> these conditions. Yeah, um, a fox. Okay, <laughs> why a fox? I think they're speedy and pretty awesome. Like, yeah, I would like to be able to like be very speedy and just very just powerful by like standing. You know, just like as I am, like my presence is heard. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's more like a wolf or something, no? Mm. Or I don't know. A fox is more foxy, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's like what foxy, the first okay. thing that came to my head, though. Okay, but I cool. know, yeah, the first thing that came to my head. Favorite color? Oh my gosh, it changes, but I would say maybe yellow right now. Okay, nice. Yeah. That's a nice bright color. Favorite place you've visited so far? Hmm, good question. I would still say Guatemala because I was just there yeah. by the lake. So, yeah. And it's winter right now in Canada. Yeah. So 
obviously <laughs> picking a hot country <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be nice to, yeah to go back um number one place you want to visit australia okay why australia because i would love to I heard a lot about, you know, first of all, the weather is great. And I heard a lot about the lifestyle and community there. It's a lot more open. Um, okay. And I would love to hopefully move there one day. So okay. that's why I was like, okay, that's nice. the place that I would need to visit before I obviously decide to just move. But maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe very soon, hopefully. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> nice. I didn't know that. Um, do you have any quote that you go by? That's a good question, actually can't think of a quote right now on top of my head but i always actually search for quotes for inspiration though um we have quotes on my best life podcast oh yeah on okay page. one of those quotes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is it's like i read a quote and then yeah. i don't like i don't fully like hold on to it so much mm-hmm. i would just like read it and then embody it for a few days and then I just i kind of like try to let it go so it just imprints in my head somehow um so it's in your subconscious yeah i really love Rumi's quotes though okay i like yeah. always i post a lot of when i post pictures on my instagram a lot of times i do add a quote and then okay. sounds very <laughs> cliche so but oh yeah <laughs> tell people your instagram so they can follow you oh like oh my personal instagram is yara kamal so that's my name full name uh y-a-r-a-k-a-m-a-l and Scoria's Instagram is Scoria, a C O R I A world. So W O R L D. Yeah. Okay, awesome. It was so awesome to have you on the podcast. You, you as well. <laughs> Actually, thank you for having me. I always say this like, oh, enjoy your coffee. You do. I'm yeah, like, it's okay. I feel like that happens to most people. Yeah. No, but thank you and so then, much for having yeah, me. Yeah, it was it so was fun. Awesome. So thank you. And make sure you check out all the products at scoriaworld.com and you have the discount code My Best Life at checkout for 15% off your order. Yeah. And oh yeah, also of course, of course, make sure you check out mybestlifepodcast.com on Instagram at mybestlifepodcast, Twitter at mybestlifepod. They wouldn't let me make it longer. Um, and also on Facebook, so you can get some daily motivation, some cool interviews, and you can suggest people I should interview as well. So yeah, take care. Until next time. Bye. Yay. Yeah. That was so fun. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun.